Hi there, welcome to Chemistry 3007, uh, Approximate Wave Functions. In the last mini lecture, we looked at the matrix elements of one electron operators uh, between determinant wave functions. In this mini lecture, we're going to talk about matrix elements between two electron operators. Now, uh, the two electron operator in the Hamiltonian. Uh, there's only one of them and in atomic units it's uh, the reciprocal of the distance between two electrons. Obviously this involves the, dis uh, the coordinates of the first and second electron. So it involves two electrons and we have to sum over all pairs of repulsions uh, i, j. We can't have i equals j because an electron doesn't we shouldn't include the repulsion of an electron with itself. That would be infinite. And we really should have a factor of a half in here to avoid double counting, but I've got rid of that for the moment. We need to remember it when we calculate the energy, not to double count. So here we have an anti-symmetrized determinant psi on the left, a two electron operator, and an anti-symmetrized determinant on the right. Well, what's the result? It turns out that the result is this. It's an integral uh, sum over i and j, uh, between all pairs of orbitals, phi i, phi j, one on r j, one on r i j, phi i, phi j. This is uh, one of the terms, and we have an exchange term, phi a, phi j, one on r i j to the minus one. What's the difference? Instead of phi i, phi j, we have here phi j, phi i. So this is exchanged. The last two terms are swapped and we have a minus sign. Ooh, I wonder where that minus sign comes from. Hmm, I wonder. Here's a, a bit of notation which is simplified. Uh, all of this on the right hand side, so in the middle here, is a little bit tedious to write out. So we're going to call this V superscript IJ subscript IJ. V superscript IJ meaning it stands for the I phi I phi J on the left and subscript i j meaning phi i phi j on the right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's v i j superscript i j subscript. The i's are electron, the first electron i, the j's are the second electron j. And here's the exchange term, i j on the top, j i on the, on the bottom because the second part is swapped. That's the theorem we want to prove. Whew. Let's do it. Here's the proof. So we're going to proceed the same way as before. Psi rij to the minus one psi, no summation. We get rid of the summations first. Antisymmetrizer, antisymmetrizer. We can get rid of the antisymmetrizer on the left. We have now a Hartree product on the left. Rij to the minus one doesn't change. We have on the right some of all the permutations and the Hartree product. Yep, it's the same old, same old what we did before, consider PU equal to the unit permutation. Fantastic. That disappears. We have phi1 with phi1, phi n with phi n, and somewhere in the middle we have a phi i, xi, phi j, xj, with a phi i, xi, phi j, xj, and we have in between here one on rij, rij to the minus one. This is a double integral. It's a double integral over xi and xj. Uh, and that's what it is. So here we have that term, phi i, phi j, r i j minus one i. So we have the first term appearing already. Fantastic. Let's go to uh, now another permutation where we swap i and j. We're going to get a minus sign because that's one swap. One swap is odd, we get a minus sign, we get a phi 1, phi 1, phi 2, phi 2, all the way up to phi and phi n. But wait, what was an xj on the right, uh, phi j on the right hand side, xj, now becomes a phi j xi. You've seen this before. And the phi i, which was coming earlier in the list, now becomes a phi i, what was a phi i xi on the left hand side now becomes uh, a phi i xj, it's in the jth position. So 
instead of integrating phi i with phi i, we have a phi i with x phi j. And for integrating x j, we have a phi j with a phi j over here, mm -hmm. phi i over here. Sorry, I'm getting my i's and j's swapped. Look at this and look how that's been swapped around. So this is the second term, phi i, phi j. And that's fine. We get that. This is not zero. There are no mismatches. So with a two electron operator, we finally get a result when the two electrons are swapped, which is not zero. It's phi i j superscript j i subscript minus one, no sum. What happens when we swap three? Okay, let's swap i and j and k. Okay, if we swap i and j and k, the ij term remains the same, but there will be a mismatch on the third swap. Somewhere on here is a phi k, which doesn't match up uh, with, a, with a variable uh, on the left-hand side, and that would give us zero. And so on for four swaps and five swaps. So the only results which contribute to this integral are no swaps and one swap. All the rest is zero. So that was just for one term Rij. To get the complete result, we have to sum over all Ij's because that's what the theorem is. And we get the result. So that's interesting, isn't it? It basically says if you have a two electron operator, um, matrix elements between determinants which have orbitals which are different by more than two are zero. If there is a certain number of orbitals on the right hand side here and a certain orbitals here and suppose this is now a different determinant with a different number of orbitals like maybe three or four that would give us zero hmm so two electron operators only have matrix elements between determinants which are different by at most two orbitals if they differ by more we would get zero and this is a general result if we had a three electron operator, we don't. If, we, if there was a term in the Hamiltonian involving three electrons at once, that would connect determinants. It would have a, a non-zero value between determinants which have three different orbitals, but not between four different orbitals. So you see the pattern here. Luckily, we don't have to worry about three electron operators. See you later.